Hey there guys, the Nettleberg here, hope you've been doing well. So in this video we will be looking at something that should be very straightforward, but it's sometimes very overlooked when it comes to Microtix, and that is configuring a dedicated management port. Now why would you want to configure a dedicated management port? Well, simply put, you might run into some misconfiguration, especially when you start working with stuff like bridges and VLANs, where you can accidentally lock yourself out of the Microtix. For those type of cases, it's very useful to have a dedicated port that you can physically connect your machine or laptop or anything into so that you can regain access onto the Microtik or that you can primarily do the configurations from so that you don't get kicked out because of some misconfiguration issue perhaps. Now I'll be looking at why people tend to get kicked off, especially when they work on stuff like the bridge. I'll show you kind of the the why it happens, and then we'll look at how to avoid that from happening just by adding a few configuration steps. So let's jump into the video. All right, so let's quickly get into the management interface side of things and think of this as a preventative step to not have to just jump into a net install Im immediately, because maybe you could still get things up and running via this dedicated management port. And this is why you'll see stuff like a CCR, the big Microtik routers, they tend to have a dedicated ethernet management port on them just for this particular reason as well. You can connect that management interface onto something like an out of band network. So you can manage it through an out of band type of place as well. But what I want to do is just connect onto this HAP AX3 quickly. And this has been factory reset. And here we can see, uh, basically, it's it's a blank Microtik. So let's just close all of these windows. And I want to just quickly go into my interfaces and showcase that I am connected on Ether2 at the moment. And let me give you a quick demonstration what happens if you, maybe you watch a video that shows or tells you, hey, if you want to configure VLANs on Microtik, do this and that. And what you should do is maybe, um, turn on VLAN filtering. And when you turn on VLAN filtering, you might drop off of the Microtik and that tends to scare people. Or you might be following along with some guide and you see, hey, remove this interface off of the uh, bridge ports. And then you go into the bridge ports and you remove the interface and then suddenly your connection drops and you can't get back into the Microtik. Now I'm gonna show why that happens by just quickly removing this Ether2 interface, which is what I'm connected to on the moment. And <laughs> immediately your face goes white and Winbox has dropped and you click cancel and this is where people will wait and they'll be like re clicking refresh and they keep refreshing and you can actually refresh until next week because nothing's going to happen you're not going to get the neighbor come back up because you've basically locked yourself out of the Microtik now that or that interface at least ether2 it's no longer part of any interface lists or firewall rules being used by the default configuration to allow that access back onto the Microtik. And this tends to only be a problem if you use stuff like the default configuration, because if you use a fully blank Microtik, then all interfaces are already just being allowed by default. But let's quickly just move my cable from Ether2 to Ether3, so we can actually get back onto this Microtik and fix the issue. So let me click on refresh. And there we go, I can see I can pick up the Microtik and let's connect. And now that I've connected, we can see Ether2, it's not a part of the bridge anymore, but I can't access anything on it. So let's just quickly look at some of the factory rules or the default configuration rules that Microtik ships out with these units. So if I go into my IP firewall and I look at the filter rules, this one is very telling. So inside its rules, there is a filter rule that says drop input. Now, if you don't remember what input is, essentially input is any traffic that is destined to the Microtik itself. It's coming into the Microtik. The Microtik is the destination. So this rule is basically dropping anything coming into the Microtik that is not from the LAN. So when you have that exclamation mark, think of that as a, the opposite. So anything that's not from the LAN, it's currently just dropping. So that means nothing can access this on a firewall level, so no layer 3 connectivity, you're not going to be able to connect to the IP address of this Microtik to try and manage it, it's not going to work. And another issue is if we look at stuff like our tools and Mac server, if you're not aware, 
The MAC server is actually what's being used in order to connect two devices over their MAC address when you're using Winbox. So if I click on this MAC Winbox server, we can see it's currently set a loud interface list. So this is where you can specify an interface list to say what can actually connect on Winbox on a MAC address for the Microtech. Same for the MAC Talnet server. MAC Talnet server, you can think of this as when you're connecting from the command line to a MAC address. And one more bit of default configuration I want to show you is the IP neighbors. Because Microtech's neighbor discovery process, if you're not aware, it's called MNDP or Microtech Network Discovery Protocol. But it works kind of like CDP and LLDP. This is why you can also pick up devices that is running any of those other protocols via the IP neighbors usually as well. But this neighbor discovery, if the interface is not a part of this interface list for the discovery, you're not even going to see the device pick up on Winbox. So what do I mean by that? Let's just quickly open up another Winbox session. Here in neighbors, if the neighbor discovery isn't set correctly, it's just going to be blank. And that's why when I removed Ether2 out of that bridge and it wasn't a part of that interface list anymore, we couldn't pick it up anymore to connect to it. So even if you set the IP neighbors, you also need to set stuff like the Mac server. And it's also a good practice to make sure that the IP firewall rules are being allowed. Now, the most basic and quickest way to get this fixed so that we can connect using Ether2 as a dedicated management port, it's going to be just to add Ether2 to that interface list that's being referenced by everything. So this is actually very compatible and easy to get working with the default configuration of Microtech. So I can go into interface list. And then from here, since the list already exists, the LAN list, I can just click on the plus and I can select the LAN list and I can just set Ether2 to be a part of that LAN list. The moment I apply this, Ether2 will function again. I will be able to pick it up in management or I will be able to get to the Microtech to manage it. Now, another thing that I might recommend is adding an IP address for the management interface. It might be this 192.168.88.1/24 that Microtech by default assigns to the bridge. You can reuse that and then use your own IP addresses in your network, or you can define a new IP address that you want to use for management going forward for your devices. So maybe I'll use something like 192.168.100.1/24, and then I can set Ether2 to that IP address. So now I should be able to connect to this Microtech using this IP address. I actually think I have it set as an IP on my computer already. So let's just go into my network settings, look at my ethernet. Great, I've already set it as well. So here you can see I've got an IP address of 192.168.100.2 with dot one being my gateway. So that's perfect. So let's test and see if this actually works by just moving the cable back from ether three to Ether2. And now that that's been moved, obviously the connection is going to drop because I physically disconnected. And I should see 92. I was just connected to 93, which was Ether3. So 92 is obviously going to be Ether1 or not Ether1, Ether2. So I can connect back on the MAC address or I can connect using the IP address now. So let's connect using the IP address because it is kind of better to use an IP to connect uh, for management purposes because the layer two connectivity can sometimes drop a little bit, but that's a general thing with Microtex. It, it doesn't always happen. I'm, I'm just warning you, you might have to reconnect sometimes if you do use the Mac address to connect. All right, so we're back on the Microtech on a dedicated management interface. I always also just recommend naming your interfaces, what they're doing. So maybe I'll just call this management. And now we have a dedicated management interface. Now, I hope this has taught you something. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.